Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I have more of my recent chat with Mary McDonough. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. So are there storylines that you wish Erin had had? Oh, yes. I wish that she would have been like a career woman and, you know, which kind of happened later. Um, I wish that she, you know, would have married Ashley later on as we go on, you know, we've been right fangirl episodes, right? <laughs> and have it end how we did. Um, you know, I think that by the end of it, like Aaron was pretty, was much more full bodied than she was. She just went through so many different, you know, romances and that, you know, to define her. I wish that she would have, you know, kind of come into her own. Although I think that that the audience probably would say that she did. So it does feel kind of full circle. Good. You know, and was there was there ever a point? I know I went to Earl Hamner at one point um, after Kurt had been killed off, and I you know was back in the house, and I was mostly just kind of hanging out with John Curtis and pouring coffee, and and there was a point where I went to him. I went, you know, Earl. Early on, this character of Mary Ellen was like so rich and full, and she wasn't going to just in her opinion, have an ordinary life. She wasn't just going to be a wife and a mother and stay home. She wanted to become a nurse. She wanted to do something impactful in life. And now I feel like the characters mostly kind of fallen into this other pattern. And it was, yeah. and it was the only time I ever had that kind of a conversation. And it was the only time I remember that, that shortly after that, they decided to have Mary Ellen go back to to school and to become a doctor. So I really appreciated that I had yeah. was given that opportunity story-wise. So did you ever have anything like that? that the only time I had it, um, a, a real big thought about something and really kind of pushed back on something was when Erin, um, of course it was about a boy, uh, when she said, wow, oh wow. And Audrey Hamner, who was the real Erin, I had not met her until after the show was over. Mm. And so I always, and I said to the director, and I said, she just wouldn't, can she just not do this? Can she just not say this? It's so girly and, and can she just be more mature and just, she can say, wow, but it was like, oh, wow, oh, wow. And I just had the hardest time. I can't even really say it now <laughs> without mocking it. And, um, and I got huge pushback especially from our assistant director who mm. pulled me behind and said, don't ever, ever question anything. Mm. And I felt really scolded and shamed. And I just felt that I didn't have any value and I didn't have any, in and my input would never be heard and I would just get in trouble. Mm. This is kind of what happened. And, um, and so I did it. And then when I, when I met Audrey Hamner the first time I said, you know, is there anything that Aaron did? She said, I never, ever, ever would have said, wow, oh, wow, over a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, yay, that's, I didn't want to do it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so somehow instinctually I knew, but a lot of time we were, times we weren't listening to. Yeah. Yeah. No, we weren't. Um, but you know, I know, I recognize now how fast they were trying to move and how difficult it was and yeah. the pressures in later seasons that they were getting from the network. Early on, we yeah. didn't have that kind of, my sense was that the producers and the creative team had more input and we had more opportunity to make little adjustments and stuff like that. And then later on, it became everything. Every little word had to be approved. Every little change yeah. had to be approved. Somebody had to come down. It had to be approved. Yep. line through the network network <clears throat> was just getting more hands on with everything storylines i remember michael being really upset about some episode where they she felt they had watered the story down too much mm -hmm. um, with the um, i believe it was the with the young woman who was assaulted you know uh and and michael felt like it backed off from it and that they were afraid to really talk about what happened and what I, happened, she felt yeah. that the original version of the script had been stronger and by the time it went through rewrites it was really watered down 
Um, so what that was about, I don't really know. I just remember hearing that, that, that she was not happy about that. And I expect yeah. you know, there were restrictions and, and things that they felt, you know, they couldn't, whether it was the sponsors, whether it was the network, whether it was, you know, look and, and you know, you and I've talked about this, but our, our hair, the image, oh. the, the look, right. Because I remember, so I was, <laughs> we were filming the engagement thing with Paul Northridge out at, out at the lake, but we had, and what had happened was we were filming at the house and we were losing the light. They were rushing and I, they didn't have time to put my hair, which I had a lot of hair then, um, in the rollers into this thing. And so I was like, look, I have wearing a hat and I had to run out of the house. <clears throat> and so I just put my hair up in the hat mm. and there were, and we just filmed it. So when they when and then they saw the dailies and everybody came back like no 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 that is not how this is going to happen because whatever how she left the house is how she meets Paul and he asks her to marry him and she can't do it in that hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened? I had my hair was curled, you know, beyond beyond as we always had this hair, right? And um, we got out to film in Fraser Park or in the, out in the woods where I first run into Paul for the picnic, right? And I have to come in with the hat, get out of the car and come in with the hat on. But they had my hair curled and it was all underneath like, <laughs> right? And so I get out and I have to take off the hat and do this. Right? It's like and a this, shampoo commercial. It's like, it was like a shampoo <laughs> commercial. It was so dumb. And so I'm sure the viewers, you know, I will look for the comments after this. Let me know that you remember this. <laughs> so I take off the hat and this massive amount of curled hair just comes flowing down. So I look beautiful to get proposed to. Huh. Yeah. Always about what you look like. It was all about the looks. It wasn't yeah. about... Yeah, but it was really odd. I thought it was really strange that they let us have those very 80s hairstyles, you know, those yes. like really fair cuts when it was so not period. I was like, I don't no. know why they let us get away with that. They should have curled you know? her bangs. We should and have had curled her bangs. say, you know, as a nurse, I should have had my hair up in a bun all the time. It's like, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. they. It's, I, it's Hollywood land. You know, it's TV. Yeah. Right. And, the, and, and I understand. Pretty ones now. <laughs> right. And we were uh, we were pretty, and so why not? And the network just probably wanted to take advantage of, of what we look like now because we weren't little kids anymore. So I and I understand that they didn't want her to get proposed to in this hat, but it yeah. was just so ridiculous that I had so to, funny. and I couldn't even fit my hair up in this, and and I had to take it off immediately so I could look a certain way. So yeah. that was just the silliness. So yeah, yeah. But you know the whole thing about the show and us even talking about it now you're doing this great series of interviews is that it was just you know it was life-changing for me i mean i have you as my sister how lucky am i right i mean it's such a gift mm -hmm. and and 50 years later who would have yeah. ever thought that i would be sitting in texas well, that's another story but and you would be in california and we would be sitting here you know having tea and having this lovely conversation and just have this enduring, loving friendship and sisterhood so long, so much later. And to me, it's just such, it, it, it's just such a blessing. I just feel so lucky. Thank you. Me so, too. I love you, sister. Oh, me too. I mean, when I was watching the pinup and I was giving you, Mary Ellen was giving Aaron advice and I found <laughs> myself thinking, wondering if you ever felt like I gave you advice because I just felt like I was so in my own little world but you and I did probably more together outside of the show than than I did, did. anyone else you know we, we went on a cruise together. together the cruise I would go see you do theater you came see me do theater I mean we just we shared oh, a yeah. lot of stuff together because yeah you know we came closest in age by that point and you were the other girl Cammy was too young still for me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like as the series went on, I was the closest to you. So I'm hoping. And I looked up to you so much. Point. You did. You always, <laughs> you can, you still give me good advice, um, which I'm, I'm always grateful for. And then I think, you know, there was that we, you, when we first started, like I looked up to you, like you were, oh, I just want to be like Judy. Oh, she's so cool. She's so smart. She's so hip. She's a tomboy. <gasps> she's the best. It was like, I just wanted to be just like you. 
And, um, and I was too young at that point, you know, cause you were 13 and I was, you know, ugh. Yeah, I was and then as Eric we, and John, you know, it was Eric and John, the older ones, but I was too old to be with Cammie and David. So I really was the middle child mm. for a while in my own family and in the Walton family. And then um, as we got older, of course, we immediately were kind of like much more similar and we've stayed that way forever and ever. You know, one of my favorite scenes, you know, and that was where they, they thought, oh, she could be funny. So then they started to try and write funny for her to do. Like, it's like, oh, it was where you're dunking my head. Oh, uh -huh. Washing my hair to go on a date that, the, you know, uh -huh. that you're supposed to be going out on that Mary Ellen's supposed to be going out on and I have the robe on and you're pushing my hair. And that scene was so much fun. <laughs> that was like one of, that's one of my favorite scenes because it's so unwalton like yeah. you know? And then all of a sudden, then there was like, oh, wait, let's write kooky things for Aaron to do. Let's put her in a Southern Belle dress and have her serve tea to J.D. Pickett. <laughs> what? Yeah. I've had people ask about working with Louis Arquette and, you know. Oh my gosh. He was, he so was amazing. He was a pro, so amazing. And I just remember sitting around the set and him talking about his family because he had a large, he had a lot of kids. And um, oh, he was just so great. If I could only have been smart enough back then to have asked the right questions mm -hmm. and learned so much more from him, you know, I just feel like all I was just dancing as fast as I could to try and keep up. And I wish that I had learned so much more from everybody who was so incredible that we oh, got to work with. Yeah, I, I wish that too. I just didn't realize who some of these people were and their I know their pedigree when we worked with them and so many yeah. missed opportunities. But I know, I know. But hey, hey, we have this incredible we <laughs> gift and this wonderful like a separate life that we got handed, mm -hmm. and and we're really really lucky. Yeah, you know. And your and life just, since, I mean, you've become this uh, wonderful writer. Your, your books uh, are just, I'm like so in <laughs> awe whenever I, I'm like, she can really write. How does she do that? It's hard. <laughs> How does she write a sentence like that? That's my office right back there. I am finishing, I'm trying to finish my fourth book, my okay. third novel in that room. I've been sitting in there for years. Hopefully it'll get done. But yeah, I know it's, it, it's hard, but I have so many more things I want to do. And this one, this one's a really hard one, but it's also very personal and deep and, and stuff. So yeah, I know, I know we learned, you know, I don't know to do so many things because of being on the show. I think we had, we had a lot of good influences. Yeah. So I know you continued and did a lot of acting after the show, both yeah. theater and TV, and then into the writing and are there other aspects of your life you'd like people to know about or you'd like to share? No. Oh, well, so, I mean, I love doing the new adventures of old Christine because I was a reoccurring character, Mrs. Wilhite on that. And that was so fun. And the thing about doing comedy, a comedy show is that you don't ever have to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't know. I don't have to cry on this show. But all the uh, almost every other drama show that I've ever done, I've had to cry. From writing, I think people know that I'm a, a, a certified life coach and that I, I do public speaking. And I, I love working to help people. And because I, I, like I said before, I felt so alone. And so now it's like I can share all of those experiences and it's incredibly rewarding. And to know that so many people feel exactly the same way I do and that we are not alone. And if we just open up and talk and share that there, we will find people who have common experiences. When I wrote my first book, Richard said, why didn't you tell us what was going on with you? Mm. So well, I was kind of trained not to. Mm -hmm. It didn't seem safe yeah. to talk about it. And everybody else was so accomplished, right? I had never acted before. I was just supposed to just be a professional and act like a grown up and do it. So, so I have that, and then um, I'll come and do another one of these with you when my when I finish this fourth book. I'm really excited. I'm yeah at the light at the end of the tunnel with it, <laughs> and it's a it's a mother daughter story. So, Aww. yeah, so yeah, sweet. yeah. Well, tell so. people where they can find you and find all your wonderful work. Well, I'm on Facebook, and uh, MaryMcDonough.com is my website, and people can always write to me through my website. And I have a lot on there about my books and coaching and, you know, and everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for being in my life. 
for 50 years. Oh my gosh, I love and you so much. May we have 50 much. more. Yes, 50 more. <laughs> and it's more. been oh, sister. such a treat to have you as a guest on my show. I really appreciate it. And I know all of the viewers out there will as well. Thank you for joining us for this special segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons with Mary McDonough. I really appreciate her being my guest. I'll be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.